Hey everyone, Dr. Fed here. Today we're going to be talking about a very interesting compound, maybe my favorite yet, and it's called PP405. And we're basically going to answer two questions. First of all, is it really worth the hype? And second of all, when can we actually expect PP405 to be released for commercial use? When can we actually get our hands on this product since we heard a lot of things about it. One of the things that I like most about PP405 is the fact that it can be used even on a completely bald scalp. This is a product that's been promoted to be used for people with advanced stages of androgenetic alopecia in contrast to other already approved hair loss treatments like finasteride and minoxidil that only stimulate the existing hair follicles and in the case of finasteride slow down the process of uh, male pattern baldness to the point that it lets you keep the hairs that you have existing right now on your scalp but we don't have any treatment modality right now except for hair transplants that actually gets you back your hair on a completely bald scalp but before jumping right into the topic i want to remind you guys that i resumed my meeting service you can now go to the link in the description and book a meeting with me to craft a hair loss strategy for your specific type of hair loss but also if you want to inquire about a particular hair loss product or molecule in development, you can also go to the link in the description and you'll have a one-on-one -on -one video call with me where you can ask all the questions that you need to ask about any topic regarding hair loss, whether you're one of the OGs that's been dealing with this for a long time right now, or you are new to the rabbit hole. So uh, if you're comfortable with the idea, you can go to the link in the description and that's a way to support uh, me creating this content for you guys. The last time we spoke about PP405, we actually talked about the phase 2A clinical trials, which we got the uh, results for in the form of a press report, which is very different from getting the raw data. And I'm going to explain why in a couple of minutes. So the company reported the design of the study, which was in 12 weeks, the patients, which were about 71 subjects, received four weeks worth of PP405, one application per day and they were then followed up for 12 weeks in total. And at week eight, so four weeks after receiving the treatment, 30% of subjects experienced more than 20% increase in hair densities. That's the first parameter or outcome that we got from the uh, this press report. And the second one uh, is regarding the safety profile, which we actually got news that there was zero systemic absorption, meaning the concentration of the treatment of the molecule PP405 was zero in the blood after completing the four week course of applying the treatment once daily every single day for those 71 subjects. And so we discussed two comments or two remarks regarding this press report. The first thing is that regarding the way that they reported the efficacy in percentages, 31% of uh, subjects reported 20% increase in hair density, which seems or sounds pretty subjective to me. I, I have a little bit of a problem with the way they presented that data. And companies tend, pharmaceutical companies tend to do this all the time to drive the stock up, uh, to hype up uh, investors and people to invest in the company before actually reporting the raw data in, in actual hair counts in target areas. And so this is not something that uh, Pelage Pharmaceuticals is the first company to, to be doing, but it's something that prompt us to temper our excitement a little bit to wait for the raw data because 20% increase in hair density can mean a lot of things. It can mean uh, 20 hairs per target area hair count improvement, and it can also mean two hairs per target area hair count improvement. So we don't know, and that's why we need to wait for the raw data, which we will probably get in a medical meeting in 2026, because that's how they presented the raw data for the phase one clinical trial, also in a medical meeting, which happened in 2024 back then. So that's one thing to wait for before allowing ourselves to be super excited about PP405. The second remark that we had is that the safety profile is very, very important here. The reason why is that the mechanism of action of PP405 is pretty particular. It works by inhibiting the uh, mitochondrial pyruvate carrier complex, which gets 
pyruvate into the mitochondria so that it undergoes the Krebs cycle, one of the uh, main sources of ATP production, which is basically the unit for energy in our bodies as humans. We consume energies as ATP, which is then stored in muscles. And so uh, our bodies produce ATP out of glucose, out of sugar, basically. And the way they do that, or one of the main ways, is uh, getting pyruvate, which is a derivative of glucose, into the mitochondria so that it undergoes this ATP production process. PP405 inhibits the entry of pyruvate into the mitochondria, which is a very serious deal. Uh, by doing that, the, the pyruvate's concentration is going to be increased outside the mitochondria, and that will prompt the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase to increase its activity since it's going to be producing some of that excess pyruvate into lactate. And the increased activity of LDH, the lactate dehydrogenase enzyme, is what what's theorized by the research team to activate the stem cells in the hair follicles and switch them from being in the sleeping phase into the activated phase so that they can recreate normal tissue with normal hair follicles even though that particular area have been bald for many many years once we switch that hair follicle stem cell to be in the activated phase it can theoretically and according to this data from the phase 2 clinical trial, switch that bald area into a completely normal area with normal healthy hair follicles. But here's the catch. If we get any systemic absorption of this particular compound into the, into the blood system and PP405 gets into some cells that are way more important <laughs> than, uh, than scalp cells, like for example liver cells or kidneys, that may lead to catastrophic effects like disasters life-threatening effects. And this is why it's very important to me that they reported zero concentration of the product after applying it for weeks, but this is yet to be enough for me at least. I want to see more data because remember the phase 2a trial was only for uh, 71 patients and for only four weeks. So I want to see more data which we will probably see in the phase 3 clinical trial. Nobody's talking about this, but this is very important. The, the mechanism of action of this particular compound is very, very dangerous. It's novel, but it's dangerous. So we got to keep an eye on the safety profile when they report it from the phase three clinical trial. So is PP405 worth the hype? I would say yes, for one particular reason. Although we need to temper our excitement because we don't have the raw data yet. All we have is 31% of patients have 20% increase in hair density, which is very vague, but I would still be excited and hyped for this product because it presents itself in this very novel mechanism of action. And it also presents itself as a compound that's gonna benefit a very particular group or category of androgenetic alopecia patients, which are the type of people who have advanced stages of hair loss. These kind of people are usually not able to benefit as much as the regular AGA patient from treatments like finasteride and minoxidil, and they're usually also not a very good candidate for undergoing a hair transplant. So these patients are usually stuck in the middle with not knowing what to do with their hair loss. So this type of treatment offers them a solution. So this is why I think it's, it's worth it to be excited about this product. The second question that we need to answer is, when are we gonna get this product? A lot of people in the comments, although I talked about this also in my previous video about PP405, a lot of people keep saying that we're gonna be getting PP405 in 2026, only in your dreams. I'm sorry to be so rough, but that's impossible to get. The phase three clinical trials will be started in 2026. Those trials usually take about one year to one year and a half to complete and analyze the data and publish. So let's say if everything goes according to plan, they will end and conclude, and we're talking about the phase three clinical trials, in the end of 2027. Only then the company is gonna be able to proceed to pursue an FDA approval, which also takes around one year to one year and a half. So I would say we won't get PP405 FDA approved before the year 2028 to 2029. This is the best and the most optimal estimate. 
and so I won't rely on PP405 to be released in the upcoming months. For now, I would stick as an androgenetic alopecia patient if I were you with the conventional treatments like finasteride and minoxidil and just hope for the best for the upcoming years. All right, you guys, the next section of the video, as I promised, I'm gonna make this a regular section every week in my videos, is talking about one of the hate comments. And the hate comment of the week is this. It's a user who's saying that you're comparing apples to oranges. An eye doctor with glasses does not lose credibility for using glasses. He's an expert at his field. You are out there giving advice, but either it doesn't work because otherwise you would have more hair or you don't know what you're talking about. It's like listening to a fat personal trainer. And so this user made this comment in response to my latest video discussing another hate comment talking about how it doesn't make sense for a person like me who obviously has thinning hair talking about endogenetic alopecia in YouTube. And as usual, I don't want you to go to that comment section and say some bad stuff to the user. We're only discussing his hate comment to shine some light over some of the aspects that I think are uh, under talked about in the hair loss industry. First of all, the fact that I'm uh, losing hair or that my androgenetic alopecia is progressing is not dictated by my absence of knowledge in the hair loss industry or the fact that I don't know what I'm talking about. I wanna make this point very, very clear. As a person who's experienced in hair loss, there's so much that you can do to prevent evolution of your androgenetic alopecia. Now, some people, even though they take all their treatments and do all the good things, but they still have advancing and evolution of androgenetic alopecia because of one reason. Their genetics are so aggressive when it comes to hair loss that they basically can't slow it down with 5-alpha uh, reductase inhibitors or monoxidil. And the second reason is side effects. Some people stop taking treatments because they fear the side effects and that's the case with me. When I started studying for the USMLE step one exam, which is the United States Medical Licensing Examination step one, there are three steps of that examination series. I was on finasteride at that point and I was keeping the majority of my hair and slowing down the process of androgenic alopecia and I was seeing some improvement in my hair. But at that point, I was gonna be engaged in a one year to one year and a half process of preparing to that exam. It's again called the uh, uh, USMLE Step 1 exam. It's a very hard exam. It lasts about nine hours to take or eight, eight hours for Step 1 and nine hours for Step 2. And so I needed to be sharp during my preparation and during the process of taking the actual exam. So in that one year to one year and a half period, I stopped taking finasteride. There is one side effect that a lot of people are fearing from finasteride, which is the sexual side effect. But there's also one other additional side effect that uh, not a lot of people are aware of, which is the neurological cognitive declining impairing side effect. Taking finasteride can create this brain fog state where you're less concentrated, less able to focus, and less able to perform well during mental challenges, like taking a eight hour exam. And so I couldn't really risk my medical career uh, at any way, shape or form, even though the percentage or the probability of me experiencing that neurological side effect was extremely rare, but I still didn't wanna risk it. And that's the reason why I stopped taking finasteride for that one year and a half to two years. And then after passing my USMLE step one exam came USMLE step two exam, which is also an exam that I prepared for for the duration of eight months. And I just passed it. I passed it uh, in 2025. I got my score report and only recently I started taking 5-alpha reductase inhibitors again. Uh, I'm now taking this dutasteride. And so taking dutasteride right now is uh, is something that I started doing to slow down the process of hair loss as I'm intending to do a hair transplant in the future. But I just wanted to make this point clear. Not all people are successful in slowing down or stopping their endogenetic alopecia if they do everything right, if they take their medication and uh, they do the lifestyle changes necessary for slowing down hair loss. Some people have aggressive genetics that even with those changes, they will still lose hair. And second of all, some people are not really willing to engage in the risk 
of uh, experiencing some side effects in particular periods of their life. And so I just wanted to point out this, this comment to shine some light over a category of patients who are experiencing energetic alopecia who you may see in the street have advanced hair loss or uh, hair loss that is progressing over the years, but that doesn't mean that they're not really equipped with the knowledge to battle hair loss. That can mean that they have either bad genetics or that they are in a period of their life that they're not willing to take the risk of taking some 5 alpha-reductase inhibitors or to take minoxidil, which is equally as dangerous because it may cause some cardiac issues. So I guess my whole point from showing this comment is that don't judge people and we're all in this together and let's just be more supportive and less judgmental because you never know why some person is uh, appearing the way he is or is taking the decision that you think he is taking. The last point that I want to talk about in this video is don't forget to document your journey and document it properly, taking pictures and consistent parameters from the same camera angle under the same lighting conditions and with the same hair length and obviously with the same camera uh, or phone if that's possible because that's the only way you're going to be able to tell whether you are progressing in your androgenetic alopecia phases or you are stable and whether a treatment that you recently took is efficacious or not. If you're not going to be doing that, there's no way to objectively assess the state of your hair over the years. Uh, that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like the video. If you did, also subscribe, uh, put a comment, let me know what you want me to talk about in the future and bye-bye.